prototype proposing the future of British motive power on the main line, the GT3 was an unsuccessful venture to investigate the use of gas turbines in rail traction scenarios. However, it was a project that would ultimately fail due to a dated design, flawed technology and a design brief that by its inception was already a decade old. Designed by English electric engineer J.O.P. Hughes, the idea for the GT3 came about in the 1950s as part of a project to investigate potential power sources for future locomotives. Built between 1958 and 1961, its design heavily resembled that of a standard tender locomotive, but instead replacing coal with kerosene, a fuel heavily used in the aircraft industry. At the time, the proposal of a gas turbine unit was a rather imaginative concept, having only just proved itself in military circles, and experiments by Rover with its Jet 1 car in 1950, eventually leading to a racer in partnership with BRM in the 1960s. With electrification of the East Coast Main Line underway, and the Midland and Scottish region looking towards diesel motive power, it was the Western region, formerly the Great Western, but looked towards gas turbine as a future power source for its locomotives. GWR had submitted orders for two engines before the war, both being built by Brown, Bovary and C of Switzerland, with the pair operating express passenger services out of Paddington from 1949. Numbered 18,000 and 18,100, these came to be known as GT1 and GT2 respectively. However, they had proven unsuccessful in fending off the threat of both diesel and electrification, and now Hughes realised that if his idea was to succeed, then it must be as conventional of a design as possible. Abandoning the cab-end designs of GWR's ventures, Hughes' conventional design opted for a 460 design popular on many mixed traffic engines complete with a tender. The design itself centred around English Electric's EM27 gas turbine unit, capable of delivering 2,750 horsepower. Mounted where a standard locomotive boiler would be, this drove a gearbox providing power to a centre axle via a flexible drivetrain. In turn, this then powered the other driving wheels via external coupling rods as on a steam locomotive. Two turbines were fitted with differing running pressures, with the low pressure turbine providing power for the auxiliary functions, while the high pressure turbine provided propulsion power. The GT3 also featured a heavily strengthened chassis in order to deal with not only the added weight of the turbine, but also the improved torque it was capable of outputting. With no requirement for coal, the tender contained the steam heating boiler as well as a crew toilet and corridor, which enabled crew changes on the move. Rolling out of English Electric's Vulcan foundry, the engine weighed in at an impressive 125.5 tonnes and was capable of hitting 90 miles per hour. The locomotive sported a brown livery teamed with underframes, grills and doors painted in Brunswick green. This was then topped with orange lining and lettering, quickly earning the locomotive the name the Chocolate Zephyr among railway enthusiasts. The locomotive was taken to British Railway's Rugby Test Centre in an incomplete state for trials, before taking part in sessions on short sections of specially laid track. After returning to the Vulcan foundry for final assembly, the locomotive found itself based at the former locomotive shed at Whitechurch in Shropshire for initial light testing and crew training on the Malpas line before commencing loaded test runs to land Dudno. Come the end of North Wales testing, GT3 was then moved to Leicester shed on the former Great Central Main Line for testing and crew training between Leicester and Woodhead Hales and later Leicester and Marleybone. During this period, the locomotive was displayed at Marleybone for the 50th anniversary of the Institute of Locomotive Engineers. This event ran between the 11th and 14th of May in 1961 
and saw GT3 placed alongside many of its motive power competitors. Following this, testing was undertaken on the West Coast Main Line from Crewe over Shap Summit. On one of these test runs, OS Knock travelled on board and was able to both witness the locomotive in operation and record its performance. This log later appeared in Railway Magazine's Practice and Performance feature in February 1962. Commenting on the trials, it was noted that despite some of the expected teething troubles and modifications, once it had departed on a test run, GT3 never failed to complete its booked workings. The locomotive itself was described as being comfortable and easy to handle for the crew, with conversations at normal level possible in the fully enclosed cab. This was a stark difference to the deafening environment of a normal steam locomotive's footplate. Despite returning favourable performances on longer runs requiring sustained power outputs, the prototype nature of the locomotive would have required further investigation and development into a configuration which would have matched the convenience of the new double-ended diesel-electric locomotives then being built. Neither English Electric or British Railways were prepared to fund this work, as they were committed to the diesel-electric locomotives that were rapidly becoming the future of rail traction with ever-improving power-to-rate ratios. It is important to remember that English Electric were finding significant success with a number of other locomotives at this time, especially the Class 55 Deltic, and so had its fingers in many of British Rail's motive power pies. Alongside this, the new diesel electrics boasted N-cab designs, doing away with the need for large turntables at stations and depots, something the GT3 still needed for manoeuvres. Also, gas turbines produce an excessive amount of noise when compared to the likes of steam and diesel locomotives. Imagine if you will running late for your train to an important meeting to finally catch the attention of a guard to ask if the train of this platform is the 9.47 to Round Goodman, only for the very train to drown out the conversation by injecting the sound of bolts and bombs into the surrounding area. Therefore, upon completion of the Shap test runs, GT3 was returned to the Vulcan foundry in late 1962 and found itself placed into long-term storage. Following internal correspondence in September 1965, the locomotive was partly dismantled and its turbine and heat exchanger equipment removed. GT3 was finally scrapped at Foes W. Ward in Salford in February 1966, having been towed there, ironically, by one of the BR standard locomotives it was intended to replace. No original design drawings of the GT3 are known to exist, with much of what we do know about the locomotive being based on conjecture and reports from the time. This was the case until recently when the National Railway Museum obtained Hughes' original documents, which contain a memo instructing that the designs were to be returned to the gas turbine division of English Electric when dismantling commenced in 1965. Whilst it may not have survived for even a decade, the GT3 has found a cult following in death among railway enthusiasts that has seen its popularity gain and a spreading interest for more information on this unique machine. Therefore, at least in spirit, it seems the chocolate Zephyr lives on. Thank you for watching, and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future videos.